in a world of busyness and life chaotic, we stop, we pause, we remember. Today I want to pre-frame our time together. You're going to hear a lot today. You're going to watch. You're going to watch a family mold together. And in time, you're going to see them mend together. But today, this is a memorial. This is a celebration of life, and you will see that in many ways over our next little time together. I'd like to begin with prayer. Father, you're the God of comfort, the God of peace. And when you sent your son, you knew what it was to invest something you loved. That a life, including mine, could be changed. And today we celebrate the investment of sky into each of us and we ask for your presence and power to be here among us now in Jesus name amen I want you to turn to one person near you and ask them how did you know sky it would take just a minute to do this turn and say how did you know sky You know, every story is different and every story is unique. Sky Amber Momberg McCown was born on August 19th, 1999. She is survived by her loving husband, Madison McCown, to whom she was married for 10 months after dating for four years. She is also survived by her parents, Eric and Kathy Momberg of North Carolina, formerly of Phoenix, her sister, Sierra Momberg and her grandmother, Cheryl Momberg. Sky was born in Torrance, California, and she lived in Redondo Beach, California, for nine years. She moved to Arizona and spent her childhood playing soccer, writing short novels, doing mission work, building houses in Mexico, and homeschooling. She was a 2017 AFHE homeschool graduate. She followed her passion for literature and writing into a bachelor's degree in communications, first at Colorado Christian University, then transferring to Grand Canyon University to graduate in December of 2020. She had recently landed her dream job as a copywriter for Trevita. Sky loved her husband and family and adventuring and exploring and finding ways to help people whenever she could. She was a precious, gentle, selfless, kind, and loving wife, daughter, sister, granddaughter, daughter-in-law, sister-in-law, and friend. Sky was a devoted follower of Jesus and made a commitment to Christ early in her life. She was deeply loved and will be deeply missed. Hi, everyone. I'm Brenda Chance, and I will explain my relationship to Sky in just a minute. But before I do that, I have a few words that I wanted to say to Madison and also to Eric and Kathy. Thank you for letting me come today to share a little bit about Sky's life through my eyes. It really is an honor. It's also humbling, it's sobering, and I'm deeply sad for your loss. I hope that the memories that I share about her will give you beautiful memories to hold on to. And Eric and Kathy, I said I'm not gonna look at you, but I'm speaking to you. (laughs) 
Thank you for sharing Sky with us. You are to be commended for the way that you raised her to seek and treasure the faith, the hope, and the love that she found in Jesus. She found it. She held it. She followed your example in that. And because I was close to you guys, I saw that you celebrated all of the right things in her life. And I thank you for that. I'm going to describe some things about Sky, and I know that many of them she witnessed in your life, and because they were beautiful in you, she wanted them to be present in her. So while I may not know Sky like many of you did, because I'm coming today to share about her as a child, many years ago in LA, we met Eric and Kathy, and I assume this is true for many people here today, they just swooped us up into friendship. And because I'm the mom of two boys, I quickly grabbed the opportunity to have as many tea parties, shopping trips, and endless giggles with the precious Sky and Sierra. What I came to learn about Sky is that she was quiet and peaceful, and yet always ready for fun. She was tender, thankful. She noticed things that others missed. She had a way of being daydreamy and yet sensible. She took in life from a deeply grateful place, even at five. But more importantly, I was Sky's children's pastor, and it's from this place that I want to share about how I saw her faith in Jesus grow. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, opens with a question. The disciples ask Jesus, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Like us. They want to know who wins, who gets to be in charge. In this kingdom of yours, who is important? And classic Jesus, he answers with an object lesson. The text says Jesus called a child whom he put among them, and he said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Now I don't know what the disciples saw when they looked at that child, but I know what I saw when I looked at Sky. Sky was wide-eyed curious about faith. Many kids come to children's church for the snack. <laughs> Not our Sky. She delighted in learning anything about God. In those days, we talked frequently about how big God is. In the video game world, kids can be less than excited about this. But Sky, she would flash that big smile as if to say, please show me. She enjoyed observing her faith community and seeing how God, this big God, was showing up in their lives. She delighted in the stories of the Bible. She was always anticipating that there was something more to know about this God. I'm told her favorite verse was Psalm 90, verse 2, which says, Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Can't you see sky delighting in that? Well, it delights me that into adulthood, she continued to receive the bigness of God through her love of nature, her life was a discovery zone of God's goodness and greatness. Sky also knew the kingdom of heaven is gentle and kind, and it should be practiced here and now. Yes, even at church, kids say and do kid things, and feelings get hurt. And Sky had one of the most remarkable sensitivities to others. 
almost an intuition about how somebody else was feeling. It troubled her deeply when she saw unkindness. And there was a familiar and consistent reaction from her. The look. Skye had this way of looking over her shoulder in the direction of injustice and lending disapproval to it without ever saying a word. We usually think of the look as something that's reserved for moms, but at six, Skye had it perfected. And here's the thing, the other kids respected her for it. She held a high standard for kindness, and she inspired that in other people. Many times, I witnessed her welcoming a new person into friendship, giving away her snack, or just spreading encouragement. She learned early that the kingdom of God is rich in resources, and everyone is welcome to share in its goodness. Skye was also pure in heart. Now by this, I mean she was a child without pretense. There wasn't a second face just for Sundays. She wasn't acting curious about God or pretending to be kind so that she could get somebody's approval. It was who she was. We might call this integrity or authenticity. In our faith tradition, we call that pure in heart. And I saw this displayed in her in so many beautiful ways. In worship, this little girl loved to worship. And for her, it was not about singing the loudest or the most beautifully or getting the attention from other people. She just genuinely loved to tell God how wonderful she thought he was in song and dance. I also recall the way that she approached our Bible memory program. It's kind of hokey, but the kids would get these tokens for verses that they memorized, and they could spend them in our little store on essentially trinkets or iPods or things like that. <laughs> and let me tell you, Sky and Sierra, they memorized verses like no overachiever you have ever seen before, ever. But what I realized about Skye is that she enjoyed going to the store, but she knew that the verses were the reward. I recently scrolled her Instagram, and I realized how much the words of scripture and the songs of worship continue to be her true delight and treasure. With your permission, I'd like to return to the greatness, that question of greatness, because on the other side of it is also that desire for safety. The great ones can control the outcomes, protect themselves. And perhaps for the disciples, after just hearing Jesus predict his crucifixion and challenge Caesar, they're feeling an overwhelming sense of vulnerability. There are moments in life when it seems that everything is spinning out of control. Nothing's going like we thought that it would, and our very existence feels risky. I felt that vulnerability when I heard about Skye's tragic passing. I felt it today when I came in and sat down Maybe all of you are feeling some of that right now. And if you are, this is where the text and Sky's life can be helpful for us. When I reflect back on Sky's childhood, I saw her confront that same vulnerability. One clear time on the soccer field as little tiny Sky learned new soccer skills up against much bigger players. Another time, she volunteered to come up front and lead her peers in worship. I don't think she thought she'd get called on, but when she did, her eyes popped like, oh no, I don't really think I want to put myself out there. But guess what? She did. And I watched her do this over and over again. 
I witnessed her face new and scary situations with courage. And courage is an interesting thing because we think it belongs to those who aren't feeling fear. Little Sky showed me that courage is not the lack of fear, but it's owning the vulnerability with a truth bigger than the fear. And that brings us back to the little child in Jesus' conversation. Children then had no power to protect themselves. To be a child was to live with the vulnerability that someone else has all the power and all the control. What a humbling reality. Courage, confidence, security, true greatness are found in humbly standing close to Jesus and trusting his power with the outcomes. And Sky did this with her life. As Skye entered into adulthood, she often reflected in different social media posts about learning to surrender, to give up control, to trust Jesus with everything. And while we will all miss her every single day, I am convinced that her trust in Jesus did not fail her. Never has she been more loved, more protected, than she is in this very moment in the presence of her Savior. I often wonder what happened to the child we meet in Matthew's Gospel. How did that moment change him or her? The scriptures don't tell us. However, we know how skies trusting Jesus changed her. And I encourage us to consider how we can change and become like this child and steward well her own trusting of Jesus. I'm uh, Zachary, and this is my wife, Rebecca Ambick. And we were Madison and Sky's best friends. Um, I'm blessed to have had Sky as a best friend. I first met Sky five years ago working on a theater show, one of her many passions. She's the best stage manager I ever had, and I'm glad I told her that. She was sensitive and attentive to everything that was needed, whether that was regarding the production or in another person's life. After some time had passed, Madison told me uh, this girl he was interested in. When he mentioned Sky by name, I was skeptical. I had met her before, and Sky was kind and gentle in spirit. And those who know Madison knows he's a bit more eccentric. <laughs> but I was blessed to see firsthand the Lord working through their lives and on their spirits. How he worked through Sky to create the best Madison. <laughs> a man that the Lord designed. Madison taught her to relax and enjoy each day from the Lord. In turn, Skye taught Madison humility and patience. It is obvious by the people who are here that Skye made an impact on many around her. The spirit she had was one of contemplation, thoughtfulness. If she hadn't previously thought through something, she might not share until she was more prepared. What a blessing of a patient and considerate soul, a spirit ready to be taught. She listened in the best way, fully attentive to what you were saying. And if she didn't understand something, she would ask questions. There were so many Christ-like attributes about Sky, and that one's my favorite. Thinking back on all the lives she impacted with her thoughtfulness, patience, and attentiveness, we hope that miracles were done through her and that lives were won for Christ. <laughs> Lastly, I know for us who are left here, we might think she was taken too soon, that she didn't get a chance to live out her life. But we are created from a perfect God who set a plan for us and that she had fulfilled his purpose of his work, and he wanted her back in his perfect arms. Just tell her in person, I love you. 
I found an unknown quote that said, in the end, it is not the years in your life that count. It is the life in your years. And I believe that was Sky. I'm so incredibly thankful and blessed that Sky was my best friend. Sky and I met four and a half years ago, though I heard a lot about her since fall 2016 from my husband, Zach, and was so intrigued to know who this amazing stage manager was. I remember the day that we met each other at a dress rehearsal for a Mozart theater show that she was stage managing for one of the several casts that Zach, uh, of students that Zach directed. She was just laying down in a hammock that was tied between two chairs and the audience, just calmly reading a book <laughs> and relaxing despite everyone else running around frantically during the few minutes of the break before the second portion of the dress rehearsal had started. She looked so peaceful and beautiful, almost magical, as if she was in her own little world, transported away from the rehearsal chaos, and it boggled my mind how she could be so stress-free and serene during the crazy hustle and bustle. Zach introduced us, and she immediately leaped up with the biggest smile on her face, saying, OMG, you're the amazing girlfriend Rebecca who knows all things theater that I've been hearing about nonstop from Zach. <laughs> and in the same time, I said, you're the amazing stage manager Sky that I've been hearing about nonstop from Zach. And we both just started laughing so hard. And it was in that moment that I knew that we would be great friends. But I didn't realize how much I truly needed Sky in my life. Our friendship continued to grow once Madison and Sky started dating, as Zach and I would spend time with them on double dates and group hangouts. I was so thankful that Zach and Madison were such close friends because it automatically meant more double dates where I could get to know Sky better. In spring 2018, Sky asked if I wanted to hang out with just her because she mentioned that as much as she loved being around our guys, she just wanted to have some girl time. And I was so happy that she only wanted to hang out with me because that meant she liked being friends with me just as much as I liked it with her. We went to Ikea, and she helped me buy things that I needed for my wedding. And we were there for far too long because we got lost with being distracted, trying to find the real plants in the various fake ones. <laughs> and we were smelling all of the small little tea light candles that were scented there. We didn't want to stop hanging out, so we went to a nearby Starbucks and talked for almost four hours, learning more and more about each other on a deeper level. That's one of my favorite days that I spent with Sky that I will treasure forever. So many cherished, sweet memories were made over the years as we grew stronger as best friends and sisters in Christ. The bond that Zach and I had with Madison and Sky continued to grow as they quickly became one of our best couple friends with the numerous double dates and adventures the four of us would go on. In the last almost two years, Sky and I talked almost every day, hundreds of minutes of voice text messages that we shared between each other and countless late night hours we spent after Bible studies and hangouts that the two of us would just spend talking, sharing struggles and heartfelt tears, exchanging stories and so much laughter until we were both crying so hard from laughing. She truly felt like she was the sister that I didn't get to have because we talked about everything and anything, both of us having similar interests, mindsets, and personalities that I often told her, Sky, it feels like I'm talking in a mirror when I talk to you. I couldn't believe that I had someone who is so extraordinary in my life because she was such a great listener, so wise beyond her years, one of my most trusted confidants who is so compassionate, intelligent, encouraging, honest, and loving, truly a beautiful God-fearing woman who sought after the Lord's heart. Even though she wasn't my actual blood-related sister, I knew that we were sisters in heart and spirit. She was the best friend that I had been praying for for so long, ever since I was a little girl, 
and I'm so grateful for the time that I had with her. Every day I miss her more and more. It's heart-wrenching not being able to say to my husband my usual starting sentence at the end of the day. Sky and I were talking today about, but God planned for Sky to be here until she was ready to go back home. Sky, I miss you and I love you so much. I can't wait until we meet again in heaven someday and be able to spend all of eternity together, picking up our conversation from where we last left off. We wanted to finish with a little something in Romans 14. For none of us lives for ourselves alone, and none of us dies for ourselves alone. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life, that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. As you hopefully all know, I'm Sierra. I'm Skye's sister and her very best friend every single day of our life, except the ones I wasn't born yet for. <laughs> she did have the advantage of being older than me. First, at the request of Skye and I's parents, my mom and my dad, I'd like to read you one of the posts she wrote, she used her beautiful gift of writing on social media to express her love of Christ. And my mom would like you to hear this one. Got to go back to my roots. That's what we all need to do as often as we can. Remember where we came from. Remember we were knit together in the womb by our father. Remember that he made us and deemed us valuable. Remember that we are not enough, but we are loved enough that God would send his son to cover our sins and bring us near. Remember that this is not our home. <laughs> Remember that the people we pass each day are equally deserving of dignity. <laughs> Remember that we are called to love God and love others. Remember that we have nothing to fear when we are in Christ. What roots do you need to go back to today? I struggled with what to write. There's just, Sky and I were inseparable, and the love I have for her is just, I know it's not something many people have. She was the person I love the most, so I decided I would write her a letter. <sighs> My dear sister Sky. Words can't describe the pain that I feel for your loss. You are the person I love the most. I loved you so deeply and so completely. Nothing, nothing can compare or explain or control or stand in the way of the pain that I'm feeling right now, knowing that you're no longer here. You were everything to me. You were my best friend. I've spent more time with you throughout my life than I've spent with any other person, probably combined. We stayed up late together. We played soccer. We climbed trees. You taught me so much of who I am and what I know. You taught me how to think, how to do my hair, how to draw, how to throw a football, how to play pretend, how to run free. You taught me how the world works. And you loved me so much through it all, even when I drove you crazy. <laughs> but I'll never, I'll never have to regret not telling you I loved you enough. It's not something I'm going to struggle with because I told you that every single chance I got. <laughs> it would annoy her sometimes. <laughs> You are the most amazing and selfless person I will ever know. You had the kindness.
kindness and most gentle spirit, always ready to listen, always ready to drop everything, always ready to love, even though you've been through so much pain. You didn't let that stop your love. And as the waves of the most unspeakable pain wash over me every single day, and as I experience the sword of this emptiness that is piercing through my heart every time I think of you, and as I realize that I have to live each day of the rest of my life with an empty spot next to me, and every moment you would have been there, it hurts more than words will ever be able to describe. I will mourn that your beautiful brown hair that I was always so jealous of <laughs> will never turn gray. I will mourn that I never got to meet your kids that you wanted to name after me. And I will mourn the moments that I've lost every single day of my life. <laughs> I love you, sweet sister. But if there's one thing that you would want everybody to know, the one thing that I want everybody to know here and take as her legacy, is how deeply you loved the Lord Jesus. Every good trait, every good and perfect gift that my sister expressed through her kindness and her love that you are all here to honor was a gift from the Lord because she was forgiven and freed from guilt and shame, and she lived that way to the fullest. My sister carried a lot of pain that not many people knew about, but she was and is freed from that, and you are all here because you felt the effects of that freedom. This isn't normal. There should not be this many people here. Accidents like this happen all the time, every day. There are people here that didn't even know her. There are people here who haven't seen her in years. But you are all here because of the love that she shared. And she would be the first to say that that love was from Christ Jesus. things she and I did all the time. We had our own little language, and we would just make weird noises at each other. <laughs> and everyone thought we were crazy, but that's how we talked. <laughs> My sister, she gave it all she had. She loved so completely and fully, and she gave her everything in everything that she did to express how much joy she had in her Lord Jesus. And she lived every single day with the sole purpose of sharing that love and light to the people around her. None of that was her own. It came from God. And that is the God that she served. And that is the God that I serve. And that is the God that Madison serves. And our families serve. And he continues to be good. Even though I have asked him why, and I have been angry, and I have been in so much pain and hurt and suffering. I have the most complete trust and peace about who God is, and I know that he is in control. And he did this for an amazing godly reason that my small human mind will never understand. <laughs> And I know with every ounce of me right now, every part of me, that she is up there dancing and praising the Jesus that she so dearly loved. My sister was someone I always like to describe as elegant. It's a quality she shared with my best friend along with her being the dork to my nerd. She always had this calm serenity and peace about her that just personified what I picture heaven to be like. 
the one thing my sister wanted most of all was that every life she touched to have that peace and that joy and that forgiveness that she found in Jesus Christ. And I know with every fiber of my being that my sister my sister would give her life again and again and again if it meant that just one of you could experience the peace and the hope and the purpose and love that just overflowed in her because of Christ. She would willingly give her life again and again if it meant that any one of you feeling broken or lost or hopeless could experience that peace as well. Sky, I love you. I didn't want this to happen. I hate that this happened and it hurts. But I know that God is in control. I know that I trust him. Even though the pain, through the pain and the anger, I trust him and he is still good. I don't know how I believe that. I didn't think I'd ever get to that point, but somehow just a split second as I was driving down the road one day, I just had this supernatural peace and trust, and I was able to say that God is good, even when he took the most important person in my life away from me. <sighs> you are still God, and I continue to praise you and say how great you are. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I pray that you wash Sky's love. That is truly your love on the people that are here, Lord. And that you work because we are here for you, Lord. And we're not here for each other. And we're not here for Sky, Lord. We're here for you. And this ceremony is a big, giant worship session for you, God. Let this service and let the memory of her love be a testament of how great you are, even when it hurts more than I will ever be able to say. So Sky, I miss you. I miss you every day and every second. I'm really good at pretending I'm not, but I am. If you see me smiling, know that it's, I'm either in denial <laughs> or that I'm trusting God, preferably the latter, but you never know. <laughs> the idea of losing you, the idea of losing my dear sweet sister who held me moments after I was born has always been my deepest fear and my worst nightmare. I could have gotten cancer, I could have blown up in a spaceship, <laughs> I could have that anything could have happened to me, but that was my worst fear. <laughs> I have had to drop everything right now in my life is radically different because I can't function in school. I can't function in life or anything from the pain because I miss you so badly. <laughs> I'm completely paralyzed but I know that you would want me to know that our Heavenly Father is right here grieving with us and he is working out everything for good. And so I will live with my purpose to trust in our Father God and live my life for him just as you would, just as Madison will. Because God is good and he has forgiven us and he forgave you. And that's the reason you're up there right now. So I will continue to live my life in that way, Sky. I'm going to continue to live it after you because you lived it after Jesus. And Jesus is the only reason I'm able to function. He's the only reason I'm able to go on. Because if I didn't, I don't think I would be here right now. I loved you that deeply. So thank you for showing me how to live like Jesus. Thank you for showing everyone here just a glimpse 
of how great his love is for us. <laughs> nothing else. God alone, nothing else. <laughs> I love you, Sky, and I always will. <sighs> when Christ shall come with a shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow with humble adoration and then proclaim how God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul. Love you, Sky. <sighs> Thank you for being here today. Um, my name's Mackenzie. I was a friend and sister in law of Sky. Um, thank you for coming to celebrate Sky's life and legacy with us. Um, when you celebrate someone, you highlight and honor them in special and extravagant ways, and you all wore blue, and that is something beautiful to see up here, um, and that you're all here. Your presence and um, kind words and prayers have meant so much to us in this time. Um, and this day is both, is sacred in both God's eyes and ours, so thank you for being here. Um, there's just hardly words, but asking the Lord to help me with this, he gave me 1 Thessalonians 1.3, which is a clear picture of who Sky is, and it says, as we pray to our God and Father about you, we think of your faithful work, your loving deeds, and the enduring hope you have because of our Lord Jesus Christ. And these are the qualities I see when I think about my beautiful sister-in-law, um, I think of her faithful work, and she had an amazing work ethic. I mean, we used to joke together about procrastinating, but I never believed for a second that whatever Sky committed to would be accomplished to the best of her ability in her job, in her marriage, in her relationships with friends and family, and with God himself. And I believe with all my heart, he welcomed her home with the words, well done, my good and faithful Sky, for her faithful deeds. Um, I also think of her loving deeds. Her presence in a room brought all the fruits of the Holy Spirit, brought joy and kindness, patience. She had self-control and peace and gentleness and goodness and faithfulness and love. I loved that she and I could have deep conversations about the struggles and joys of life and what God was speaking to each of us. And then we could also be crying laughing because of a quick-witted remark from her, which was very characteristic of her. And I think about the time when she brought up a phrase that I had never heard before. And you all may be familiar with the phrase, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Like, I, I get what you're saying. I understand. And so... I was just sharing something with her, and I was like, do you get me? Do you understand? Like, does this make sense? And she straight face goes, I'm smelling what you're stepping in. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard that, but you get to use that from now on. <laughs> um, we enjoyed so many fun conversations over coffee, and but it was her friendship and 
camaraderie that um, made it truly special. And her life is a powerful testament to the real and tangible and deep love of God for everyone she met. I'll also never forget Skye's enduring hope in Jesus. She knew and loved and pursued the heart of God every day. His will, his desires for her life were a special priority. Even when things were hard or circumstances were difficult or disappointing, Skye trusted her Savior. When I made the decision to move to Texas this summer, she encouraged me so much. When I was lonely there, we would FaceTime, send voice messages, or just send funny memes over Instagram. She was faithfully there for me and many others, I'm sure, in hard circumstances. Sky knew how to comfort those with the comfort and hope by which she had experienced from the heart of God himself. Sky had a faith and hope in Jesus that surpassed her circumstances, an enduring hope, a faith unshaken. And as we continue to celebrate Sky's life and legacy all the rest of our lives, um, may we too be inspired to pursue being faithful in all we do, to be kind and loving even when it's hard, and to look to Jesus for hope and comfort and strength every moment. We miss you terribly, Sky, but we'll see you again. And may the depth of our grief only be matched, surpassed by the full weight of the glory of God. We'll see how long that lasts before I need to get to it. So, thank you all for coming. What a great turnout, and it's just a testimony of who Sky was to so many people and to us and our family. We just want to say thank you, and we are here to celebrate Sky's life. Um, she meant the world to us. Uh, she so beautiful, as you can see, and she lit up every room she walked into. She immediately made you feel comfortable because she accepted you for who you were. Um, she loved people unconditionally as she was loved by her family, um, by her husband, my son, whom I forgot to introduce who I am. And I'm, I'm Scott McCowan, her father-in-law, and I'm Madison's dad. And um, he loved her unconditionally. We loved her unconditionally. Her friends loved her unconditionally. And her Lord and Savior, Jesus, loved her unconditionally. So before I go further, I need to respectfully share something, um, sh several things here to just give you context because I want to address a common question that we in the family are getting. Our families, the Malmbergs and the McCowans, we are known by two things. One, we're the M&Ms. <laughs> now, Yes, Eric and I are probably the more nuttier ones. Uh, but none of us are plain, I can tell you that. <laughs> Secondly, we are a family that has a faith, and we put our faith in Jesus Christ. And we know that we will see Sky again. And it's not because Sky was such a good person. She was. And it's not because we're, we're good people. I'm not going to say I am. But... It's because, let me give it to you this way. I'm a preacher's kid. I got to go there. Romans 3.23. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's all of us. Isaiah 64.6. All of our righteous acts are like filthy rags. Ephesians 2.9 says, Salvation is not a reward for the good things we've done. In other words, we can't earn our salvation. That relationship that we have with Christ, even that we get to live each and every day here on earth, we can't earn that. In Ephesians 2, 9, the verse before that in, in, two, in verse 8, it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. 
This is not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. But friends, we have to receive that gift. It has to be accepted. Now, you could leave it at the doorstep of your heart unopened, but it is your choice to receive that gift or not. The good news is that God wants everyone to receive that. I know this not because I want it to be that way, but because his word says that. Second Peter 3, 9, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Thankfully, as you have heard, Sky made that decision. We have made that decision. We know we will be united with her again and collectively worshiping the Lord and Savior who gave us that eternal life that we we look forward to in eternity, but we have the pleasure of having that relationship with him here on earth. So why did I spend just a few minutes going over that? Well, it has to do with a lot of the question that we get asked, which is, how are you all doing? I want to address that just real briefly. Not exhaustively, that would be, we'd be here all day. It's too complicated to answer that question too. But I want to talk just real briefly about how we're doing. I want to talk about what your part is in it as well. And then we as a family, we have a request. But before I get to all of that, let me just kind of share a little bit about my journey that's a little bit reflective in each of our own way. A friend of mine sent me a passage, and I'd read it a bunch of times. It was Psalm 27, and in Psalm 27, King David, now this is the king who slew the giant Goliath. He's older now, and, and his enemies are surrounding him, and he's just pouring out in written word to the Lord his emotions, and he's just so raw at times. But he found hope in something, and he said in verse 13, I would have lost heart, or another way of saying it is, I would have lost hope unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. When I read that, again, I'd read it a bunch of times before, but it never hit me like just then. I started focusing on and asking myself, am I, am I able to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living in the midst of this, this valley of the shadow of death? We feel like I'm walking in and we're all walking in. And you know what? I saw it. And I'm going to share with you in just a minute what I saw. But I need to go somewhere first, not literally. With you, journey with me. The Apostle Paul, he wrote most of the New Testament. Most of you probably know that. And if you were to look at the giants of the faith, he would be way up there, okay? He had much wisdom. He counseled and um, started a lot of the churches in the New Testament. He was just the epitome of Christ in the human form. He was just a great giant of the faith. And yet, in 2 Corinthians, he says something that kind of shocked me, and I didn't know this until recently. Again, read it a bunch of times, but did you know he was depressed? Here's a man who had all this wisdom, and he admits, even in writing, he was downcast. It was a term of looking down and, and being pulled by the weight of depression. And he says in verse 6 of chapter 7 in 2 Corinthians, but God who comforts the downcast comforted us by the coming of Titus. Titus? Wait a minute. What about the comforter, the Holy Spirit? What about, well, I prayed and then all of a sudden all those emotions were gone and I was just filled with joy. What about that? No. He said, God sent Titus, the coming of Titus. Well, it, you kind of wonder, well, how did that work out? Well, just look in the next verse. He says, my joy was greater than ever. So it worked out. God knew what he was doing and knew what he needed. So why did God send a person? Here's what I want you to really grasp. Friends, we are all here. We are created for community. All of us. We need each other. 
We find comfort when someone comes alongside us and empathizes with us, who sits with us, lets us just weep and share where our heart is hurting. The same author, Paul, even in Romans 12, 6 says, Weep with those who weep. And other passages or versions says, mourn with those who mourn. He understood this. He grasped this truth. And we don't need answers. We don't need you to solve or fix. But you have just simply been present with us. And letting us know that you care is so powerful for us. I share that because we're all going to go through tribulations, turmoils, and trials in life. And it is important that you are plugged into community, be it a church, be it family, be it friends. All of that can be ministering to us. And so when I looked at the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, friends, I thought of you all. You all are here today. Those of you watching live streaming, those of you that will watch this later, you have been the Titus to us. You have ministered to us. So on behalf of the M&Ms, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts that are a little nutty at times or a little almondy at times or caramel. They've got so many different varieties. We say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the home visits. Thank you for the phone calls, the texts, the cards with the handwritten beautiful notes, the flowers, the gifts, the prayers, and oh my goodness, the food. Yes, it's been a little tight around the waist today. So thank you for the great food. And thank you for continuing to be there for us and especially for praying for us. From our newer friends to our friends of old, family that are too far away that and those family that are here close by. And I want to do a special call out to those that Sky worked with at Trivita. What a great company. What a great group of people. And also to the people that Madison works with at Caliber in Scottsdale. You guys have been incredible. So compassionate, caring, and loving. So patient. We cannot thank you enough. You have been a blessing to Madison and to our family. So thank you. So that addresses part of how we're doing. And I've addressed that second part of how you've had a part to play in it. But there's one more element that I need to discuss and share briefly. And I want to just say this because I know some of you may not have been raised in church. And yes, my dad was a pastor and he went on to be home with the Lord years ago. I'm not a pastor, so it's not like every time I get up here, I get an opportunity to preach, but this may be a little bit of a time. I'm not called. Just don't say anything, Pastor Phil. Don't want to have a conversation afterwards. But there's one more thing, and, and it's, here's what it is. Our salvation that we've been talking about, we've talked about her being saved it doesn't just mean that we go to heaven when we're passed away. It does mean that. It's a ticket to heaven. Lack of a better term, it's terrible. But it's accepting Christ as meaning we get a relationship with our Creator, with God, our Father, our Heavenly Father, today, each and every day. That is so powerful for us because, as David says in Psalm 23, walking through the shadow, the valley of the shadow of death, it doesn't, as a Christian, it doesn't mean that that takes away all the hurt. It doesn't mean that we won't grieve. It doesn't mean that we won't have hard moments or hard days. It means that we have someone with us to walk through it with. That's so powerful. And yes, we do have the Lord with us, and it's comforting. Psalm 34, 18, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted, he rescues those whose spirits are crushed. Our spirits have been crushed. Psalm 56, 8, you keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. 
I, I think of two things when I read that passage. One, a loving father, as we read, he has to be close to us to wipe those tears away and capture them. That is such a loving, compassionate father. He's not far off just in heaven on his throne going, hope you guys doing okay down there. See you when you get here. That's not who God is. The other thing is I was just wondering, how big is that bottle? Because that's got to be really big. There's been a lot of tears lately. I don't think I could lift that. It's kind of where my mind goes. Forgive me. That's why I'm not a pastor. <sighs> Sarcasm. One more close thing before, one more closing thought before I, I get to this request. And I'm going to be very transparent with you. And we all have different perspectives on this. But here's mine. I, I, I can't make sense of this. I, I can't. I don't, I don't know how to, I don't have words to describe why. I just don't. It doesn't make sense. My son found the love of his life. Not even married a year yet. We had hopes and dreams. Why? Why, why now? I don't know. However, years ago, decades ago, I went through another tragic loss in my family. And it took me almost two decades to realize something. And I share this with you because I hope that you take this and that if you're going through now or later a tough situation, that you realize something that took me almost two decades to, to learn. And that is the source of my hope and healing is not found in answering all the questions of why. The source is found in the person of who. Let me give you an example of this in Scripture. Philippians 4, 6, the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. Instead, in every situation, with prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, tell your request to God. And here's the next part that really landed for me. And the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. What that's telling me is my peace doesn't come from understanding. It comes in Christ Jesus, and he's the one that can guard my heart and my mind, and my peace comes from him. It's not in answering all the why questions. This side of heaven, I'm not going to know all those questions. I'm not going to know all those answers to those questions. But I do get the opportunity to know who and he walks that through with me in this journey of life. That leads me to my third thing today as I wrap up, which is our request. And that is, if you don't know the Lord Jesus, we want you to seriously consider making that decision to accept him today. This is the most important decision that any of us have ever made, and frankly, any of us, all of us, will ever make. The good news is that you, don't, you can simply come as you are. You don't have to clean up first. Just as Skye loved everybody she met and accepted them for who they were, that's the way Jesus is. And you know what? She learned that from Jesus because she was accepted by him in the same way. She modeled that. So in the next few minutes, after Madison speaks, Pastor Phil's going to come up after one more montage of videos, and he's going to talk further about how to make that decision and what that looks like. And again, if you've not accepted Christ as your Savior, I just challenge you to really listen to where he goes with that. It's really simple, and it's our prayer and our desire that no one leaves without settling that today. I want you to know on behalf of our M&Ms, we love you. We are so blessed that you have shown up and that you are here with us and that you have reached out and cared for us.
May God bless you all in Jesus' name. As a lot of you know, uh, my name is Madison. I was Skye's husband. I want to thank everyone that's spoken thus far. I really appreciate all of you friends and family. Um, two, sorry. Two God Struck Lovers. That's the name of the book we thought we should write based on our relationship. She wanted to take magical moments of our relationship, both big and small, and make them into an encouragement for others. Now every single one of those moments and memories is an encouragement to me. My wife, Sky, though she was small in stature, had the biggest heart I had ever seen. She had the biggest and brightest smile that could melt any stone heart like mine when we first met. Her gorgeous eyes reminded me daily just how lucky I was. That God is so good and just what a miracle it was to be in her life and walk along, or walk alongside someone that inspiring, such a godly woman. She was brilliant, and so wise beyond her years. She was so incredibly loving and humble without fault. She loved the Lord so much, and God loved her so much. She was so precious to him, I'd, I believe he would do anything for her. As previously stated, and I know what scripture says in Psalms thirty four eighteen, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. And... I'd like to share with you all what encouragement has been more important to me than anything. Two days after what happened, alone and sobbing in my room, I felt the Holy Spirit give me an image. An image of my gorgeous wife in a gorgeous place only matched by her gorgeous smile and laughter that she turned that she turned to a man in white and asked him this will you let him know i'm okay and what, and let him know he'll be okay and help him help him not to lose hope That was the image. Then I had felt directed to two scriptures. The first scripture was John 16, 22. And it says, so now you have sorrow, but I will see you again and your heart will rejoice. No one 
will take your joy from you. The second scripture was Joshua 1.9. And it says, Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid or dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I grieve deeply. But I grieve deeply with hope because I am confident in where she is, where I am going, and that I'll see her again someday. After many tears and regaining the ability to sit upright, I wrote a note. That note is a love letter to someone I'll see again someday. Some of you have already seen it, but I'm going to finish by reading it now. My dearest Sky, you were my world. You were my love. You were my best friend. You helped me to hope. You showed me grace. You were faithful. You walked with me for only a short while on this earth, and yet we've lived, laughed, and loved enough for a lifetime. You were the best, and you made me my best. You touched my life and so many others. You changed my life and so many others. You ran your race, though it feels cut short. You were perfect. None have the words. You are missed so dearly and deeply. The depths to which I miss you are not comprehensible by words. For as long as you needed it, for as long as you wanted it, I loved you and you loved me. Oh, my wife, my beautiful darling wife, Sky. You hold hands with the only one who has scars in heaven now. You spend time with the face of grace himself now. You know true and pure peace now. You ran and now you can rest. To my late wife, who means so much to me and who ran a grace so beautiful. I love you, I miss you, and just you watch me run. I don't know if you're aware that you have sat in a very unusual memorial service. Uh, this gray hair will tell you something that I've done this for decades and have probably done two, three, four, maybe 500 of these in my lifetime. This one has been exceptional. Here's why. Today we heard, we watched a beautiful story. A story that is difficult to understand or even comprehend. It's a story of legacy. A story of love. The greatest, a story of God. 
The question that kept coming to me over and over is, what was Sky's secret weapon? What was your secret weapon to be able at this age to hear what you've heard and to experience her in the way that you experienced her? I'm going to give you something today that some of you did not know, and that was her secret weapon was a heart transplant. You say, what? I didn't know that. Well, the heart, the word heart has many implications. When you hear the word heart, you can think of romance, amore. Heart, you can think of a cardiologist, blockages and bypasses and surgery. Heart can refer to a person that's pleasant and caring. They have a heart. But scripturally, the heart is the center of our soul. Not only for spiritual activity, but for all activity. The heart is the inner you that decides, thinks, and feels. I can't speak for you, but I can speak for me that Jeremiah pretty much nailed my heart. He said the human heart is most deceitful and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? The human heart is something else, and we refer to the heart a lot, but give your heart to Christ. Give it your heart, speaking of doing something at its best. The human heart weighs less than a pound when fully grown and is only a little larger than the size of your fist. It beats about 72 times a minute, 100,000 times a day, 40 million times a year. And each day, the heart pumps the equivalent of 1,800 gallons a blood weighing six tons that it puts through your entire body. Your heart allows your circulatory system of 60,000 miles to stay busy and to stay operating. It's interesting about the heart. Jesus was asked one time, teacher, what's the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus responded, he said, um, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind this is the first and great commandment i said that sky's secret weapon was a heart transplant see physically every year about 2000 people have heart transplants and they say that right now over 3000 people are waiting for a heart transplant People with severe degeneration that prompts their heart to be taken out and a new heart to be put in. Every year in our country, people's hearts need to be replaced. They need to be transplanted. What you heard today from a sister, a sister-in-law, from a children's pasture, from a small child, to a father-in-law, to a husband. They spoke of someone that had had a heart transplant. That heart, that want to and can do of our lives was turned around and transplanted and replaced with a heart for Christ. Ezekiel said, I'll give you a new heart. I'll put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. Every bit of this is a reality that if you've never experienced that today, you too can have the exact same secret weapon that Sky lived with. You can receive a heart transplant right where you are sitting. You say, all of this doesn't make sense, but can I ask you something? When I met with the families and I listened to these parents, they said, could you just do this one thing? Would you make sure that her life was not lived in vain, but that you give a call to salvation that a young lady whose life was taken would allow someone else 
to have a heart transplant that they could find truth and find Christ. And so today, you say, how that's going to take place? It's very simple. The book of Romans, which you've heard referred to, tells us that if we will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, as Scott said, you don't have to get cleaned up first. You're not going to get good to get God. You get God to get good. Some of you can think of a million reasons why you don't deserve a heart transplant. But I'm here today to tell you that a young lady's passing brought you to this moment that your life can be forever changed. If you will confess with your mouth, Jesus, you are Lord, and I receive you into my life. Then you could begin the heart transplant of a lifetime. Every head bowed, every eye closed. This moment, we enter the surgery room of the great surgeon who knows what it is to sacrifice his son that you, though you may seem undeserving, could have this. It's being made available to you because God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That whoever would believe in him, you don't have to perish, but you can have eternal life. Right where you're sitting, if that's you, I'm just asking you, if you would, just to pray this simple prayer and invite Jesus Christ into your life heart he's here we acknowledge sky for bringing us together for this potential surgery of someone in this room If that's you, I invite you to pray this prayer softly, right where you are. Lord Jesus, there's a lot of things I will not understand and do not understand. But today, you allowed a young lady to get my attention who had found a secret weapon she had heart transplant and Jesus I invite you to, to take my heart and forgive me I receive you Jesus I invite you into my life I believe you gave your only son for me, and now I give my life to you. And I thank you that you have a love for me that I don't even comprehend yet, but I will receive it as my life goes forward. I thank you for the gift of salvation that is mine. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer and you say, I don't know what next steps look like, I'm not sure what to do, I will be in the foyer. Some of our staff will be in the foyer. Sky's investment in you could be life changing for you. I want to thank you again for your time for caring, for loving the M&Ms. I'm going to ask the M&Ms to be dismissed. They're going to go around in just a moment. They'll meet you out in the lobby. I'll dismiss you in a moment.
we're going to show the video montage again that was in the beginning if some of you missed it. You're welcome to stay as long as you need to. In just a few moments, the family will come right around to the lobby and, and we'll greet you. But thank you. May the grace of God be upon you. And may you find life like you've never found it before. God bless you. Thank you for being here today. This means a lot to this family. Go in grace. Go in peace. Amen.